This is the second video in a series that is intended to introduce people to Excel and its usability and accuracy. Uh, Excel is a great tool for working with larger data sets. Um, the first video in this series worked on explaining navigating within an Excel sheet and also changing the formatting and making the sheet more user friendly. In this video, we're going to look at basic formulas and along the way we're going to learn some navigation tips. So as I mentioned in this video we're going to put our hands on the data and we're going to use many of the simple straightforward formulas that Excel offers. The sum function, the average function, the if function. Uh, we'll combine the two and use average if. Um, we'll also use the min function. Some of the shortcuts that we'll get a look at along the way uh, include navigation hotkeys, selection hotkeys, and uh, the ability to drag formulas, and um, the need to, and instructions for how to lock the cell reference when dragging formulas. This is the hypothetical grade file that we formatted in the first video, um, and we're going to use this video to apply some formulas. So to begin, suppose we wanted to calculate the grade for these students, that would be a two-step process. The first step would be to find how many points each student earned. The second step would be to find what the percentage of uh, those points represent related to the total possible points. So to begin, I'm going to type the formula for sum. Um, alternatively, we could use under the Home tab this shortcut right here. If I click on this, it's going to generate a sum function and automatically highlight all of the numbers to the right, which is problematic in this case because we've highlighted the student ID as well. Um, alternatively, I'll hit Control Z and Escape, and I will type it in manually. When you hit the equal sign, that lets Excel know that you're going to be typing in a formula. And as I type, Excel will generate uh, opportunities that begin with the letters that I've put in. And as you can see with just an S, there are a lot of different formulas that Excel has pre-canned for you. Now you let Excel know you are done typing in your formula by either hitting tab, in which case you'll receive the highlighted formula, or using a parenthesis, and then it's going to tell you what it wants you to do. In this case, it wants our input. So I will click on uh, the cell J2, which is the last grade for student number one. I will hit Control Shift right, which will take me all the way to the beginning of the worksheet in that row. However, I've highlighted the student ID. I don't want to include that in the grade, so I will hit Shift and right, which will give me just the grades. So again, escape equals SUM parenthesis. Control shift left, shift right. And then I will close and hit enter. Now, if you are uncomfortable with if you are uncomfortable with the hotkeys, you can also just grab and use your mouse to highlight. So this student had a sum of 265. And the cool thing about Excel is once you've got your formula perfected, you can double click in this box here. And as long as there are data to in the column to the right, it will calculate this for all of the cells to all, all of the cells all the way down until the data stop. By double clicking, you can see what the function is and what the highlighted cells are. We have highlighted all of the points and not the student ID. Escape. Double clicking here will automatically resize the cell. Now for our grade. If we want the student grade, we need to know how many points were possible. I'm going to insert a cell above the existing grade book in order to indicate on each assignment how many points were possible. So I'm going to right click and choose insert. You could also type I here since it's underlined. And I will type a label here, possible possible points, looks like cap locks, got put on, and tab. 
uh, double clicking here to resize. I know that all of the homeworks were five points apiece hypothetically and the quizzes were a maximum of 15 points each and the exams were a maximum of 100 points each. And so here I will use the auto sum function and you can see it highlighted all of the possible points and hit enter and we can see that now this class is out of 360. So for our grade resizing uh, we know that if I type equals sum, that's the earned points, divided by the possible points, and hit enter, I will get a grade for student one. In order to add some decimals under the home tab, I will go here and click to the right, or I'm sorry, to the left, which will give me some decimals for my grade. So this student has a C average. Now we will run into an issue if I click and drag this cell. and the reason why is that I've told Excel to drag down the cells that it's looking at. So it's going to look at the sum or total points for student 2, but now it's trying to divide by the word sum because I did not lock the cell reference. Uh, I want all of these grades to refer to the total possible points. Um, I will show you how to do that. Hitting escape and deleting, I'll go back to the first formula, double clicking on that, we can get in. If I hit F4 here, it will put a dollar sign in front of the K, which would mean as I drag right, that is telling Excel I want to continue to look at column K, and the dollar sign in front of the 1 is letting Excel know that as I drag down, I want it to continue to look at the first cell. I'll hit enter. And now as I double click here, we will get grades for all of the students. By scrolling down, we can see that yes, indeed, it is looking at the sum for each student and referring back for the denominator to K1 for total possible points. Hitting escape will leave the formula unchanged. So here we've seen how to generate a grade book really quickly in Excel. What if we wanted to know who receive the highest grade or the lowest grade. Um, let's go for the highest. I would type equals. I'm thinking max. And here's max here. I've hit the down arrow. I will hit tab. It's given me a parenthesis. Clicking up to the bottom cell, I will now hit control, shift, holding both, arrow up, shift down, and close parentheses, enter. And we see that the maximum grade, adding some decimals, is 0.953. Pretty good grade. We could do the same thing for the min. What if we wanted to be really nice and exclude the minimum score for a student on an exam? I will do this by right-clicking and inserting a column. And of course, I will call this min E for min exam. And in order to do this, I'm going to subtract 100 points from the, from the possible. And down here, I will subtract the value of the minimum exam score. Equals min tab. And then I'm going to hold, just hit shift and arrow over. So we highlight all of the exams. Close the parentheses. Now we want to subtract this from the points earned, so we're going to multiply this times negative 1 and hit enter, and then double click here. And then we have to make sure that our sum function now is also including the min. We will click on the little box and drag it over and hit enter, and then drag that down. And the same is true here. It looks to be working. Okay. So now what is our maximum grade after dropping the lowest exam? Now our maximum grade is a 96. So what is our average grade? Well, average grade, we could type equals AV. Here's our average, tab, arrow up, control shift up, shift down, and close parentheses our average grade, adding some decimals, which we could use the paintbrush to do that as well. Average grade is a 78.77 in this hypothetical situation. What if we wanted to find the average exam grade? 
or rather an average quiz grade. But we've got all these zeros, and I'm not really particularly interested in a student's average grade if they didn't take the quiz. So what I'm going to do is write average equals average if, and then highlight all of the quiz grades. And now it's saying, what's the criteria? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a comma, and the criteria is gonna be quotation mark, greater than zero, close quotation mark, and then parenthesis enter. And the average grade for students that took the exam is 13.1, whereas the average for all students would be equals AV average, control shift up, shift down, enter, 12.69. And we could use the same functions for all of the assignments and all of the homeworks here. It's fantastic. Once you've written your formula, you can simply drag it over to get a look. So a couple other things that I would like to look at, mainly the if function all alone, and that should wrap up the video. What if we wanted to know if a student got an F, or how many students failed the course. We'll use an if function equals if parenthesis. I'll highlight the grade, and it wants a logical test. So if the grade is, let's say, an F, less than 0.6, comma, the value of true. I want a 1 to indicate if a student got an F comma, zero, close parentheses. So the one is going to indicate that this statement is true. The zero is going to indicate that the statement is not true. Hit enter. So this student got a C and did not get an F. Double clicking will carry the, the work down. And we can see there's a few of them. If we go to the bottom, I can use my auto sum function. Control shift up, close parentheses enter four students by summing this we can see that four students got F's now there are a host of formulas that you can use my hope is that this introduction provided you with a path to see how useful Excel is and just how many things you can do within Excel and there will be more videos later in the sequence